I'm gonna miss you, man. I hope Cali does you good. And you always got a home here, man. You're the only magician I'm friends with, so I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss you. You sure everyone well. It's crazy. I'm really proud of you. You're the man, and I'll see you soon. I'll definitely be visiting you this year. I don't hope, I know you'll succeed in California, brother. You're in California now. Don't get shot by black people. <laughs> no, you're afraid of black people. Don't become a drug addict. Don't get an STD. Uh, don't get anybody pregnant. I love you. Good luck, because you're gonna need it. No, you're not. You're gonna be good. You'll be fine. Gold, I love you. Don't ever come back. <laughs> you know, maybe come back to visit, but don't ever come back to move here. It's your home now, and uh, I know you can do it out there, so I love you. So much, bro. Lately, I've been, I've been losing sleep Dreaming about the things that we could be But baby, I've been, I've been praying hard Said no more counting dollars, we'll be counting stars Yeah, we'll be counting stars If I really loved magic, why would I reveal it? I never intended or wished to be well known for magic. At one point, there was nothing more I wanted than to disassociate myself entirely from magic. Rip the earth into with your mind. All anyone wants in life is to feel important, and that's why the people who get into magic dive so deeply into it. It gives them the ability to be someone they're not, and to feel important, and to get people to like them. Magic is the only art form that you can do to gain people's admiration, respect, envy, and love by deceiving them. Magicians are professional liars. I wanted to manipulate cards. I wanted to cheat and be able to do something under someone's eyes that they didn't know what I was doing right in front of them and say I was doing one thing when I was really doing another. The whole art of manipulation really appealed to me. All right, what is Evan's greatest strength? Uh, he's really good at telling stories. I remember they got their first computer and they were at their, their old house and they were in the basement and Evan was down there and he was typing on the computer and he had a list of things and I looked, I remember looking over his shoulder and say, what is that? And he says, oh, these are all my stories. I said, what do you mean stories? And they were story titles. And, uh... I said, so you've written all these stories? He said, no, 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 but I'll tell you the story. And the one story that always stood out in my head was, was the shoes that ate, ate the people's feet. And it was this whole story about this pair of shoes that when people would put on, they ate their feet. And here's this, I don't know, four or five or five or six year old kid with, like, it was over a hundred story titles, you know, and he was gonna be a storyteller. And, and, you know, so he had that focus to, put those things together and organize that stuff. I lost my voice. What I'm gonna try to do is go perform magic to people without saying a word. I'm not gonna say hi, I'm not gonna say my name. I'm just going to see if I can successfully get them into watching magic, performing without speaking. Can I turn around to the camera now? No. You're kidding me! 
You see how we did that? I think Evan's greatest strength is his discipline. Like his discipline to work on his channel, his discipline to do P90X instead of going out on a Friday or Saturday night. Um, he's, just, he's just got this strict discipline that he never ever breaks from. If someone feels that they can't do something in their life, I think he would always try to talk them into, why not? Like why not do what you want to do and shoot for your dreams and your goals? When it comes to public speaking, I can't do it. So when I see Evan doing it, like doing it like pretty well, like very well, I just, like, the way he communicates, talks to people, that, that's his strength. That's his greatest strength, in my opinion. Be able to connect with people, like, just, like, right there on the spot. Probably his charisma. He's very charming. He's, uh, very sly. Very, uh, I guess, mysterious. It's got to be his mind. His mind. He's got strong will. You can, uh, he'll, he can get beaten down and beaten down and beaten down, and he will always come back up on top. When he wants something, he makes it happen, he doesn't make excuses, and he doesn't talk about how he's going to do it, he just does it. He's determined, he's always determined. He doesn't let anyone talk him out of things. Out of anyone that I've ever seen, he's pushed himself to have what he has more than anyone. He wants something, he will have it. He's gonna do whatever it takes to get it. As I rack my brain right now, I cannot think of anything of recent at all. Or going back, and then when he first got into magic, way back in, in middle school, that he, he, he just likes to set goals and he likes to get goals and he likes to finish them off. He really helped me with my card magic. I learned almost everything I know from like Derek. It, it's just amazing what he does and it actually inspired me to kind of start doing what he's doing and actually start my own YouTube channel. He's really like inspired me to like want to improve more at magic and become the best I can be at it. Basically gotten me to be a better person. Being a positive role model. That in itself is so rare. Has anyone here ever felt picked on at one point or another in this real life? Wow. That's, more, that's actually a lot more than I expected. Kids will pick on you for anything. Well, middle school is probably going to be the worst years of school you'll ever go through. I did get picked on. I got picked on a lot when I was younger. All the time. I got picked on every day. For about eight and a half years. Since kindergarten, and I've been bullied for about nine years. Went through life with white eyebrows, what do you expect? Kids, uh, they'd go like, they'd be, ha, ah, look at how far his bottom lip sticks out. Flat nose, because my nose was like this. And I was the fat girl, and just thought they would be, that it would be, Fun to pick on. They'd always point out how pale I was. But that's just because I don't go outside because I had no friends. People made fun of me for like my thick eyebrows and my big nose. Yeah, it's uh, it's my baby. Well, they make fun of my hair. Say, you know, your hair's red. I mean, wasn't really creative, but look, he has no soul, which I don't care. Something about my nose being big and my nostrils being really big, but I don't know. I, mean, I think it's kind of cool because I can take two fingers, stick up one nostril, and on a good day, three fingers. I used to get jaws a lot because of my teeth. My gym teacher, he gave me this name, the albino rhino, and then everyone would call me it. My good friend, Eric Davis, like he actually picked on me before like we really got to know each other. He'd always get really nervous or have a harder time spewing things or spitting things out, so he'd, uh, Either rub his hand or you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. 
I don't know, his voice would always fluctuate. It was kind of the goofy part, but I don't know, it turned into something I love, so. He's my best friend. Eric Davis, my best friend. Friend. I had picked on you at first and then realized that you're probably one of the most pure hearted, honest kids I would ever meet in my life. And I decided after that, stop picking on you and then stop anyone else who's picking on you because I don't know, it doesn't matter who you are what sounds come out of your mouth and stuff like that. It's, <clears throat> I don't know, as long as you're having fun, you should be allowed to have fun. Take one that you want. Right, look at it. What I want you to do is kiss the face of the card. Perfect. Now I'll let everyone see that. Mm -hmm. And here, you hold on to it, and you tell me when to stop. Right there, right there. So watch. From about right there, from the middle of the deck, put both your hands out like this. Step one, your card from the middle jumps to the top. The nine nine, right? Mm -hmm. That's your card. I'm gonna take the your. One, uh, the one I chose? Yeah. No. It's not? No. This is. She lying? No. Oh, I have to think fast. Oh, right, here, hold on, hold on to the nine. Okay. This isn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, you kissed the card in the beginning. Yeah. But we've never met. No. So we've never kissed before. No. <laughs> so I don't know what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, to, you have to give me a kiss on the cheek for the card. <laughs> really? Yeah. Don't turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so look, here, come here. Watch. I had to do that. I had to do that or else, or else this wouldn't work. So look. What I can do is... What was your card? What was it? The one I chose? The king of hearts. I like getting the reactions from people. It's an escape from everyday life pretty much. It helps me get close to people and kind of understand them better on a more personal level and amaze them as well. It helped me get out of a phase where I was consistently bullied and made me feel like I was accepted. When I was 12 or 13